At this time, we have Oregon on the dais from Oregon. Uh, head coach, Coach White, uh, student athlete Danica Mercado, Gwen Speckis, uh, Nikki Udrea, and Megan Kleiss. Coach, uh, general comments about the game, then we open it up for questions. You bet. Well, obviously, this is always the toughest uh, conference to hold is the one after you're eliminated. Uh, there's only going to be one team that's going to be happy at the end, of course, and uh, that's going to be a great matchup between those two clubs, Oklahoma and Florida. Uh, Oklahoma's got a great team. Uh, they played well today. Um, I'd like to thank uh, you know, NCAA, um, USA Softball, all the grounds crews. Uh, I thought the field was immaculate. To, did a great job with that. Um, and the setup, this tournament, as like I said, keeps getting better and better. Um, you know, obviously, you know, one thing I'd like to see uh, going forward, and I think this tournament has really illustrated it, is that uh, the need for an instant replay, uh, a need for an ability to make a challenge. Um, there's been so many games decided by some calls that could have gone, you know, well, I think we're in correct calls, to you, be quite frank. And uh, they've made a big difference. This game is played at a high speed, umpires are human. You should have the ability to, to challenge a call. I think uh, the two losses we've had, there were both questionable calls that were made uh, that led to those two losses. Um, obviously, we were made, we helped, uh, didn't help ourselves. If don't get me wrong, we, we're, we're human too. But I think the need for a, a challenge is uh, sorely needed, and hopefully we will look at that and that we have the ability now with a lot of games uh, to be able to do that. Um, I want to thank my team. Uh, they left everything out on the field. Um, obviously, yesterday was a big day for us. It was hard to come back again today, but we got ourselves in that position. We know that. Uh, we had a two-run lead. That was fun. <laughs> it didn't last too long. Um, but, you know, hopefully being back here, we learned a lot of things about our club, about our players. Uh, I know that I'm so proud of these uh, players for how hard they fought. Um, I'm very sad to see the three seniors leave, Danica Mercado, Sam Puentes, and Nikki Udria. Been a huge part of this club and the building of our club. Um, but, you know, it goes on. And uh, hopefully the experience that our underclassmen learnt from this tournament will help us become a better team in the future. I want to thank Lisa Peterson, uh, Rob Mullins, um, and all our support staff. There's so many people I just uh, can't continue to name them all off. But just the support we had, our student managers, our equipment managers, everybody, just incredible. And, and we're so uh, humbled and pleased to be back at this tournament and competing against some excellent teams. I think you can see that the field was uh, – Great this year, um, as far as one to sixteen, and some outside the sixteen, as I've said before. And the con the growth of uh, softball is going to continue to get better as we go forward. So, but thank you. All right, we're going to open up for questions. Scott Wright with the Oklahoma coach. Could you uh, elaborate more on the play? I assume you're talking about the bunt uh, that looked like it had gone foul. Uh, what you saw, what you were told by the umpires, anything else? Well, you, you tell me. Was it foul? There you go, you answer your own question. I don't need to tell you anything. What, what explanation were you given by the umpires? Said it was fear. Coach, just talk about uh, with two, two questions. First, on the uh, your three seniors, how much they were a part of putting this, uh, moving the program beyond where it was before yeah. and getting them to this point. And my second question was about how the growth of pitchers on this level has grown in the last several years. You know, what's been in the, the development process of getting to that point? Yeah, well, you know, obviously, you know, Nikki Udrea, we came in as our shortstop, well, shortstop and played four years at shortstop. Uh, was a four-time Pac-12 champion, um, a three-time Pac-12 champion, sorry, mm -hmm. and uh, three times World Series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It all goes so quick. It all blends together. But, uh, you know, in the same with all the seniors up here with Danica as well, uh, actually a four-time Pac-12 champion, which is a red shirt. But, um, so, you know, obviously they've had a, a big part in our success. And what happens there is that uh, as you bring young underclassmen in, they help to build, they help to coach, they help to reinforce what we say as a team to those players. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of what they're doing. Uh, I'm sure right now they wish they could probably have another couple of years, but it doesn't happen that way. So... Uh, but I, I'm so proud of them. As far as that pitching goes, obviously we have three uh, very good uh, pitchers, uh, Megan Kleist, um, uh, Maggie Ballant, and Miranda Ellish, and hopefully they will continue to lead us as we go forward. Um, you know, I just want to know is from a coach, you know, what the pitching rules are going to be going forward. And I won't say any more on that because there's a big controversy on that as well. Why are some players allowed to, to cheat, and, you know, and why some aren't? And what am I supposed to teach 
my players? And what am I supposed to teach other people? So we need to get that sorted out. Uh, Michael Kenny, Register Guard, uh, Danica and Nikki, can you just talk about this, how tough this loss was to get, get up? It looked like you have a chance to take it to a night game and then see things fall apart a little bit there in the, the bottom of the fifth. Danica. Um, I think that obviously any loss is tough at this point in the season, but we knew that um, from the beginning of this tournament, we put ourselves in a little bit of a hole and have been playing with our backs against the wall. Um, so I think that my team came out there and they fought as hard as they can every pitch. And um, it came to a point where we did make a couple mistakes and we weren't able to back it up with our bats. I think there's only so many times that you can put yourself in the bottom of the seventh, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of my team because we very well easily could have rolled over after losing the first game and we fought every inning until the very last one. Yeah, I would have to agree with Danica. I think that we never we never gave up um, even till that last out. And as tough it is as it is to swallow, um, I wouldn't change anything because everything happens for a reason. And so, if it took us losing this game to build the program to learn something about these uh, our teammates to learn to go forward, then that's what it took. So, John, when John McKelvey with the Norman transcript, right here. Sorry. Um, I just follow up on Scott's question. Were, what was running through your mind on that play? Were you trying to make a play at first, or were you trying to let it go foul? Uh, what what went into that bump play? Um, obviously, I was trying to make the play at first. You know, I've made that play a thousand times in my life, and I'll probably make it a thousand more. But just wasn't meant to be today, and you know that's okay. I I need to get better. I need to make that play next time. I know I can make that play fair or foul. I can make that play. So. Um, yeah, I was, I was trying to make the play. I was I didn't want to play umpire because, you know, I've hit a ball this year that was three feet foul and it was called fair. So um, he had the best view of it. We both saw the same ball. Um, I'm not going to comment on it because I tried making the play and I threw the ball away. That's all on me. But, um, yeah, obviously I was trying to make the play and it just didn't happen. Uh, for, for Coach White, it, how much of an advantage is it, for, if any, for Oklahoma to – to play in the Women's College World Series here in Oklahoma City, one and two. You mentioned off the top that the series will be a competitive one between Florida and Oklahoma. If you put your analyst cap on, what what will be the keys to a series like that between those two teams? Yeah, good question. I mean, uh, you know, both have got very good pitching staffs. Um, you know, uh, with Barnhill out there and, and Gurley, I mean, those two are very tough. They complement each other so well. So it's really going to be a low-scoring affair. So it's probably going to come down to whoever makes the mistakes, you know. Uh, like most good games, are more or lost than they are won. Um, and, I, you know, I feel that's what happened to us a little bit today. We lost the game. Um, you know, Oklahoma put the pressure on us, but we lost it. And that's what's going to happen in that final, I think. It's going to be who's going to make the mistake and who's going to capitalize on it. Well, obviously it's an advantage, I mean, because their fan base is here and, and uh, you know, they're, they're close to this area. But, you know, the game still play between, between the lines at 60 feet, turn left, 12-inch softball. I mean, the whole stuff I tell our team, it's, it's the same. And uh, you've got to block that out. I mean, we go on the road and we play in some pretty competitive environments. Obviously it's not 10,000 people or 8,000 people. But it's still the same. It's still a lot of pressure when you go play a series at UCLA or go play at Arizona. Um, so, I, you know, I don't think that's a fact. I, certainly as a coach, I don't play that up. So, um, yes, it's an advantage, but should it decide the game? I don't think so. Mayor. Mayor Nangus, Fast Pitch News. Um, coach, out of this whole tournament, only two pitchers are seniors. Um, mm. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a staggering yeah. fact. What do, what do you think about the pitching overall? And, I mean, there's potential that we see a lot of these girls back here again next year. Well, it's funny because I think two years ago we were all saying how hitting's dominating, right? <laughs> you know, the hitters are just dominating everything, and now we're starting to see the pitches dominate a little bit. Um, I know in our conference we changed the softball. We changed from the, from the Wilson ball to the Worth ball. It's not quite as lively. Um, and so the pitchers' numbers were dropped a little bit. You know, our ERAs were under two. You know, last year they were over two. Um, they had probably had something to do with it, so now we're matching up more with the SEC. You want to see the SEC's numbers were better. Well, they're using a different ball. I, I mean... Trust me, when we hit the Wilson ball, it's a lot livelier than the, the Worth ball. So that's kind of evened it out a little bit. And one of the reasons why as a conference we changed to the Worth softball. Um, but, you know, going back to your point um, about the pitching, uh, I think it's, it's getting better. 
You know, there's uh, obviously there's three in our club that are uh, pretty exciting to watch, and there's a number throughout the country. Uh, so hopefully that continues to, to move forward because those games are very exciting. All right. Any more questions? Here we go. Megan, you guys have so much coming back. Just a sense for how valuable this experience is going to be and what you hope uh, your teammates take from, from this week. Uh, I think that this is a really big learning experience um, for the underclassmen coming back. We can use this and kind of let it fire us to be better next year and just kind of know that we tasted the chance to actually get to the end. And, um, you know, just coming back next year stronger and working on our weaknesses that were shown in this last game, shown in this whole tournament, and just be better than we were this year. Are there any more questions? If not, Coach, ladies, thank you. Thank you. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network. See all of our shows and blogs at www.fastpitch.tv.